Hello, now usually when we're talking about downsizing and turbochargers it's presented as a negative thing. In the case of this new Aston Martin DB11 V8 however, I think it might be rather more interesting. That's because this is the first Aston Martin to use a Mercedes AMG engine. Now we seem to have been talking about this type for ages now, don't we? But finally, we have a car with a Mercedes engine in it. This is going to be a very interesting test for Aston Martin because a car like this is bought very much on emotion and character and heritage and all that kind of thing. Can a such a distinctively British car maintain that character with a German engine. We shall see, won't we? Now then, a few numbers before we go much further. The DB11, as we know it, launched with a 5.2 litre twin turbo V12 of Aston Martin's own design. It's got 608 horsepower, which is a big beefy engine for a big beefy car. This 4 litre twin turbo unit, which we know very well from many AMG products, C63, AMG GT, all sorts of cars, it's got 510 horsepower and pretty much the same torque at just shy of 500 pound feet. So on paper, it's going to be quite an interesting comparison, especially when you consider that this car weighs about 115 kilos less than the V12 and 90 kilos of that comes off the nose. 90 kilos, that's an astonishing amount. Now, we know from the four-cylinder F-Type that that can have a transformational effect on the way the car handles. It means that the springs can be set softer, it means that everything benefits basically and Matt Becker and his team within the handling department have taken full advantage of that. But you can get bogged down in numbers and specs and all that kind of thing. It, more important in a car like this is character and Aston Martin has done some work on the engine they have put their own exhaust system on it they're very keen to make it sound different from the AMGs which is kind of important because it's actually its closest rivals are Mercedes products with the same engine now this kind of sits halfway between maybe an AMG GT and an S-Class Coupe which has just been facelifted with guess what the same 4 litre twin turbo AMG engine. So Aston Martin's biggest rivals are also using the same engine, are kind of related in a way. So Aston Martin needs to make it feel different, needs to make it sound different. One of the ways they've done that is they've used an automatic gearbox as opposed to the AMG GT's dual clutch. It's also mounted in the back of the car in a transaxle arrangement which keeps all the weight in the middle and helps make it feel a bit smaller than it actually is. That's of course helpful. It will mean there's a slightly different character in the way it delivers the power, the way it goes on the road. Very interesting to see how that manifests itself. Now, this car would cost you about £145,000, just shy of that. That's about 13000 less than the V12, so quite a significant margin. This particular one would be more like 170000 thanks to... Um, yeah, thanks to a very purple interior and a few extra carbon trimmings. Let's not get bogged down in numbers and bits and bobs like that though. What we really want to know is how it goes in comparison with the V12 and whether that all-important Aston Martin character has been maintained. Let's find out. Right, so before I go too far into the driving impressions in this DB11 V8, first a slight apology. Those of a continuity bent will notice a uh, slight difference in the weather conditions in which I am driving now and the rather sunnier ones in which the B-roll was shot. See what I mean? Yeah, I wish I was here a couple of days ago as well. Anyway, we do with it what we will and see what we can find out about this new V8 DB11 in the rain. It should work in the rain, shouldn't it? Anyway, so there's going to be a lot of kind of emotive discussion about the idea of a Mercedes engine in an Aston Martin but to be honest I'd rather just look at the car for what it is and how it goes I think that's probably a bit more interesting so Aston Martin's very keen that this is a sportier version of the DB11 not that the standard one the V12 is in any way lacking in this but with a V8 and all that weight off the nose and the ability to retune it a little bit, they have seen an opportunity to make this feel distinct from the V12 and the feel that they're going for is slightly more aggressive, slightly more sporty, um, a little bit more chuckable and things like that. So at the sportier end of the GT spectrum, and that kind of makes sense because the power's not, although we're 100 horsepower down, the torque is pretty much the same as the V12. So the opportunity is there to make it feel like a different car. Now I'm just mooching along at the moment in GT mode. You've got two ways of adjusting the settings in the car on these buttons here on the steering wheel. So you progress through 
GT Sport and Sport Plus, and that does the usual stuff like gearbox and throttle response and noise. And then you can, separately of that, you can adjust the dampers. So that's quite nice because it means on a day like this when you might want the softer dampers, you can still progress up through the engine mode. So I can mooch along in comfort like this, automatic. That eight-speed automatic is really smooth. That gives it a real kind of waftable sense when you want to just cruise. And it's a very comfortable place in which to do that. It's a very purple place in which to do that in this car. I think Prince would be a fan, wouldn't he? But as far as living up to the kind of GT end of what the DB11 needs to do, it works really well. And again, that automatic gearbox gives it a different nature from the cars Mercedes fits this engine to. So there is a definite character thing there. Now then, let's go a little bit more aggressive. So I'll press that button and I will go to sport mode there. I'm going to go to manual shift on the paddles. We'll up the pace a bit and see what happens. So the thing you the thing about the DB11 is it sits in a slightly odd position, doesn't it? Because it's it's a big wafty GT. What else might you have for this kind of money and performance? You, I guess you'd be looking at a Bentley Continental GT. You may be looking at S-Class Coupe, probably the AMG versions. Or you might be kind of graduating from, I don't know, maybe a 911 Turbo or something like that. Now that's a pretty broad spectrum to cover. And I think the DB11 is definitely well, it's more sporty than an S-Class Coupe, even the AMG ones, and it's definitely more of a driver's car than a Bentley GT, although maybe a four-wheel drive Bentley might be a bit more preferable in these conditions than a powerful rear-wheel drive Aston Martin, but that's by the by. Um, but yes, this is definitely in the kind of grown-up GT sector. This is at the sportier end. I hope that makes sense. And then, as I say, with this V8 engine, it's at the sportier end of that sporty end. Still with me? Hope so. Anyway, so what has Aston Martin done to this engine to make it an Aston Martin engine and not just an AMG engine in a crate? Well, they talked a lot about the noise. They want, they, in their opinion, AMG goes for a kind of more, perhaps American kind of bassy V8 noise. They wanted it to sound a bit more sophisticated and European, a bit more mid-range, a bit more top-end. And I think they've achieved that. It sounds good. It does sound a little bit fake from the inside. You know, they've obviously had to work hard to make it sound like a V8. It's one of the problems everybody's had with turbo engines, but the AMG one is better than most. And I think there are a few complaints about the way it sounds. It has a definite character about it and different from the V12 as well. So it works from that point of view. There's a definite V8 Aston Martin-ness about it, which I think is nice. I mean, big Aston Martins have traditionally had V8s, haven't they? I mean, before the DB9 era, a big gargly V8 was the thing, wasn't it? So the V8 character works. The engine feels, the throttle response is really good. But again, we know that from the AMG installations. Aston Martin's got its own engine management on it. So that means they've been able to play with the, the settings and things like that to their heart's content. But they've kind of kept the general nature of this engine, which is to say that it doesn't suffer too much from lag. It's got a reasonably crisp throttle response. You definitely feel when the turbos spool up and you get into that kind of boosty mid-range, you definitely sense that there's more to this engine than just cubic capacity and you feel that it's forced induction, but it's not intrusive. There's no kind of turbo noises or anything like that. It just feels really strong. And this is a quick car. It's a really, really fast car. One thing that you do get from that kind of huge mid-range in these kind of new school turbo engines is you can get quite a lot of kind of destabilizing torque. And in the rear wheel drive platform that Aston Martin uses, that can be, shall we say, a little bit exciting in conditions like this. There are moments when this car feels on the lively side. Now, a couple of my colleagues I've been driving with have viewed that as a bit of a negative aspect, but to be honest, I'm not finding it quite so much of a problem. So yes, there's a, a definite rear wheel drive flavour to this car, and 
I quite like that. It's a little bit uncouth, but then Aston Martins have to have that kind of edge to their character, I think. Although it's a GT, although it's a big wafty car for covering big distances in, Aston Martin's got a fairly proud sporting tradition and also a slightly kind of, just a slightly edgy character, which I think this car kind of carries over quite well. You kind of get it in British cars, don't you? You get it in the F-Type. I'm pretty sure the new TVR will have it as well. But I think in keeping a mechanical locking diff rather than the kind of E-diff, the electronically controlled differential that Mercedes uses, in some ways, Aston Martin's got a bit more kind of old school character about it because those, the C63s and the AMG GT and the S classes, they feel very traction based. They're very good because that diff can work in full combination with the ESP systems, things like that. It can distribute the drive torque all the way across the axle really unobtrusively. And they've, they've got really good traction now. They're less of the kind of hot rod feel that they used to have. But I think this. V8 DB11 has got a bit of a kind of an old school vibe about it, but that's kind of fitting with Aston Martin, doesn't it? And I think on a twisty road like this, you get, although it's a heavy car, you get a feeling of all that weight being centered between the axles and also less of it being over the front. And when you combine that with really nice steering feel, lovely steering feel, and some very well sorted damping, for a big, powerful car and one that is liable to get quite lively in the wet, it's still got really good flow, even on a dreadful day like this, even on slippery Spanish tarmac. And what Aston Martin has done is they've there's enough slack in the leash of the ESP systems that the car will move around quite a lot on the throttle if you're greedy. And it's very quick to remind you that it's powerful and rear-wheel drive. The systems will intervene, but it's not a car you can drive with your brain disengaged. You have to be, you are involved in the driving experience, and I think that's good. And I think the way you can drive it just on the cusp of the traction in conditions like this, and you can feel the diff just starting to lock up, just rotates into the corners a little bit, and it does it quite subtly, and I really like that. It's got a it's definitely more entertaining than, than an S-Class Coupe or, or, or a Bentley. You just saw a little wiggle there. That's the kind of thing I mean. Even on a part throttle, you'll get a bit of movement like that. So it's not a car you can drive like an idiot and expect to get away with it. So, I, But I think that's appropriate. That's good. That's Aston Martin laying down its character. What about the rest of it? Well, the 8-speed gearbox is really good. I say, back in waft mode, it was very relaxing and in now that I'm kind of out here in the sticks a bit it's a little bit more assertive and it, the shifts are nice and quick they punch through rapidly and if I go up into sport plus mode the engine gets louder start getting some bangs and pops in that style that you kind of expect from AMG and yes a more kind of assertive character appears in the car and there you go you'll say you know you can it gets progressively more exciting as you go up through the modes, but it never gets contrived or unruly. There's just a fundamental balance to this car, which is really, really nice. As you can probably tell, as we're going up this road, I'm enjoying this car more and more, and feeling a little bit more confident in flinging it around. And that's quite a strange thing for such a big car, to feel like you can actually chuck it around a bit. That's definitely something that this V8 has over the V12. You know, that was definitely, it's a big, powerful car, but you have to kind of contain its weight a little bit more. This one, you can start to fling it around a little bit, a little bit more like a Vantage. So that's very welcome. I like the character a lot. The Mercedes infotainment system is very good as well. I think that's been a massive bonus for Aston Martin. And when you combine it with this really stylish interior and all that kind of parts sharing, button count, all that's gone. This is now, this feels like a properly premium interior. It feels like an expensive, well-made car. And I think Aston Martin's benefited hugely from this tie-up with Daimler and AMG, both in the kind of infotainment and the electronics and the nav and things like that. But now, 
in the engine as well. So I think to conclude, fears that Aston Martin's character would be diluted by such a strong charismatic engine in itself from AMG, we don't have to worry about that. In some ways, I'm not even thinking this is a Mercedes engined Aston Martin. I'm just thinking it's a really nice V8 engined Aston Martin. And what more could you want than that, really? <laughs>